Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to another episode of Dr. K12. I know I haven't made a video in a long time because I've been busy on night flow and also the inpatient service, but I do have good news. I'm done with nights for the foreseeable future. I just have one more 24-hour shift to do, and then I'm completely done. Recently, I've been doing some research, and alongside, I've been mentoring some medical students in research. And I always ask myself, what are the qualities or characteristics of a good research mentor? So I decided to make a video about this. Hopefully this will help you all who are looking for a research mentor or looking to become a research mentor to medical students and residents. Uh, again, I'm no expert in this, but these are some of the things that I've learned along the way in the past five to seven years that I've been doing some clinical Perfect. research alongside my training. Uh, so let's go ahead and get started. So tip number one, you want to choose a research mentor that has some dedicated research time. Uh, if they have 20%, 50% of their time that's dedicated to research and academia, there's a higher likelihood that you'll get more things done with them and that you'll be more productive. In some institutions though, it's hard to find somebody who has dedicated research time. So in that situation, you should research your mentor. Look them up, see how many publications they've had in the past year, or ask somebody who's already worked with them before and see if there's somebody who has a quick turnaround time because it's all about how productive you can be. As a trainee, you're only gonna have a short period of time, so you need to make the most out of that time. Tip number two, choose a mentor that values and praises your effort and your accomplishments. Even if it's a small accomplishment and your mentor praises you for that, it's only gonna motivate you to do more. So you want somebody who acknowledges you, who knows who you are, and again, who values and praises your accomplishments. Tip number three, you want a mentor who treats you with respect. If there's a research mentor who's known to take away authorship positions after a project has reached its completion, then that's probably a red flag. That's why, as I've mentioned in my other videos, I always ask and determine what the authorship lineup of a project is going to be before I get started, so that I know how much work it's gonna take and what I should expect at the end of the project. Tip number four, you wanna choose a research mentor who respects your time. You don't want a research mentor who's only interested in meeting with you when it's most convenient for them, or let's say, doesn't tell you about a deadline that's coming up until the night before and expects you to be able to deliver a product by that time. Tip number five, you want a research mentor who's interested in completing a project with you from start to finish. Not somebody who has a database that they want you to collect data for, and it's been going on for the past 15 to 20 years. The likelihood of you getting a publication out of that is probably very low. A good research mentor should put aside their own desires and help their research mentee become successful in their own endeavors. Tip number six, choose a research mentor who's capable and willing to do every step of the project with you, including the data collection and the analysis. Not because you're going to ask them to sit down and do the data collection or the analysis with you, but along the way there will be things that will come up and you'll need their expertise or their help in doing each step of the process. So if your research mentor is one who is good with analysis and has kept up with their stats skills, then it'll go a long way and there's a less likelihood that you'll get stuck and the project falling apart and not coming to fruition. Tip number seven, and one that's really important for me, is choosing a mentor that has a quick turnaround time. I used to be a procrastinator, and now I have a to-do list, and I write everything in my to-do list, and I stare at it until it bothers me, and I finish it so that I can take it off my to-do list. So when I dedicate myself to a project, I wanna knock it out and completely finish it. So I want research mentors who have a quick turnaround time so that when I send a manuscript to them or a data set to them, they can get back to me quicker so that we can finish the project. Tip number eight, you want a research mentor that gives you feedback on your work. If they pat you on the back and tell you you did a good job but they don't give you constructive feedback, then there's no way for you to grow professionally. Most importantly, you want a research mentor who's not only interested in doing research with you, but also cultivating a positive working relationship with you and getting to know you. That's the sort of person that will write a recommendation letter for you and perhaps have the connections to get you to the next step within your career. Thanks for watching and I hope this was helpful. Don't forget to hit subscribe and I'll see y'all next time.